Welcome all you math maniacs. This is section 4.1, 4 4.21, graphing polynomial functions. First day we're going to be spending in it. And so I want to first talk about why we need to learn to graph without Desmos. Uh, basically the goal for today is to be able to produce a graph. And you might say, Bergman, Desmos can already do that. If I really wanted a graph, couldn't I just type it in? Well, really, why should we learn to graph without Desmos is a valid question, and it's because we want to make sure that we can learn about a graph's features. We want to learn about uh, what, what exactly is it about a polynomial function that they give us, uh, some sort of a function or equation. What is it that produces the things on a graph? And, uh, of course, you can always verify your work, you can always verify the x-intercepts x, x and the, the end behavior and the zeros and all that. You can verify that with Desmos. But if you can actually produce that information on your own, then that shows that you can you understand what um, why a graph is the way it is. So I'm going to spend this entire video producing this graph right here. This is like this is the result. This is the answer. And in order to do that, we have all this work, and we've got some of these steps. You, not all of these steps are going to apply every time. But basically, we're going to go equation table graph in a very thoughtful way. Uh, how do we know which points to choose? Well, I'll show you in just a second. You're going to start off with this function right here. And if you solve the, um, the related equation to equal 0, like if you tr turn this into a 0, then you can factor it first, and when you factor it, then you get x cubed is equal to zero, and x therefore x is equal to zero. This has a multiplicity of one, and therefore it's going to cross, and because one is odd, it's going to cross the x-axis, and because this has a multiplicity of one, we got this. Sorry, this is a multiplicity of three. Sorry to be confusing you. Multiplicity of three, multiplicity of three, multiplicity of one. Because one is also odd, it's going to cross the x-axis here as well. It's going to cross it at x equals zero and cross it at x equals three halves. Uh, and so you can see here we take um, zero. Those, those zeros that we just found, we're going to plot them. We're going to plot not that one. Here's the zero, and here's the other zero. We're going to put them on our table, and then we're going to surround them with test points on either side. This is going to, we know that because it's a zero, it's going to break up the graph into what you would expect to see parts that are below and parts that are above. And so you can plot the zero. You know that it's at 0, 0, and you know that it's at uh, 1.5, comma, 0. And you know that it's going to cross both of these. The graph is going to cross the x-axis at both of those zeros, as you can see right there. The multiplicity is 3, and, there, and it's odd, so therefore it crosses the x-axis. The multiplicity is 1, so therefore it is odd, and it crosses Another thing that we need to think about is end behavior. So the leading term is negative 2x to the fourth. We got that right here. And because it is to the fourth, we know that it's going to look like a parabola, like x squared. And then because it's negative, it's going to be going, it's going to actually look like negative x squared, going up and down. We don't know what's going on in the middle from just the first term, but the first term will definitely tell us what's happening eventually as it goes to negative infinity to the left and that it goes to the negative infinity to the right. And so just from those two pieces of information, just from these two things, what we could construct is some vague idea that we've got a graph and then it's going to cross here and it's going to cross here. This is at 0, and this is at 3 halves. And it's going to go down to infinity. It's going to do something in the middle, and then it's going to go down to infinity here as well. That's end behavior. And then we know it's going to go somewhere in here in the positive area. It's not going to cross in the middle, but it's going to do something in the middle. 
where the question mark is. Anyway, that's verified when you actually look at the graph here. The end behavior is true. The end behavior predicts this, and the end behavior predicts this, and crossing it only at these two points. Then we can take some more test points. And the test points kind of surrounds the x-intercepts and the zeros. You take one test point over here uh, to the left of zero, and then one test point in the middle, and then one test point over here. And when you actually plug them into the function h, you get uh, you get you get here you get more points that you can graph here and then once you plat once you graph those points you can connect them another helpful little uh, <laughs> point that you can graph is the y-intercept that uh, any you can always plug zero into the function and see what you get out in this particular case you get zero zero so the y-intercept has already been graphed as a as one of the zeros, but that's also useful to graph and an easy point to plot. And so anyway, after you get these points, then you know you can connect them here. You might not know immediately that the graph curves around like this just from the table, but you you still get a pretty good idea that it goes like this in order to connect those points. So just to recap. Uh, if you've ever been to Mexico City, the capital of Mexico, I want to hear about it. I've never been, although I've been to Mexico maybe four times, uh, two times from the north, like from California driving down, which is kind of awesome. It's a lot of fun. And then one time hiking from Guatemala into Mexico. I didn't even have to show a passport or anything. I just like hiked up a mountain. And then on the other side was Mexico, and that was fun. Anyway, to graph a polynomial function, you use the leading term test to determine end behavior. You find the zeros. You use the x-intercepts to divide the x-axis into intervals. And then you take test points. You can find f of 0 to get the y-intercept. And if there's any other additional information you want, you can, plot, you can plot it. And as a partial check, use the facts that the graph has at most n x-intercepts, and at most n minus 1 turning points. Uh, the multiplicity of the zeros can be considered in order to check where the graph crosses or is tangent to the x-axis. And at the very bottom it says you can also check the graph with a graphing calculator, which I think is a really good idea to do, but not until you've actually tried it on your own. When they, what do they mean by turning points? Uh, this is a turning point right here. Where it starts going from um, increasing to decreasing. So as a check, you can know that here, if there, if the degree is 4, then there's going to be at most 4 x-intercepts, which is true here, and at most 3 turning points, which is also true. You only have 1 turning point and 2 x-intercepts. Anyway, that's the gist of it. Start uh, assignment 4b1, copy the problem list, and do the first problem, and I'll see you in class.